Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Chimera Cape and Blade. I hope you are all prepared to dust off your swords and to wipe off your capes. Welcome <laughs> to the latest episode. Yeah, you know, the blood you have to wipe off your capes by just like, you know, oh. capes are notoriously easy to like wipe off with like yes. a cloth and then like swords are really easy to just like whack until all the dust comes off of. Um, it's not a rug or a carpet. <laughs> That's quitter talk. Mm -hmm. If your cape's not long enough to be used as a rug, why are you even having it? Seriously. Anyways, Exhibit speaking of that a, wonderful voice you just heard, heard, the voice of objection to all my beautiful jokes and humor, introduce yourself. I'm not the sole voice of objection. I'm just the loudest voice of objection. <laughs> you were the stand-in for our audience's voice of objection. Uh, all several of them. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. I'm Angela, uh, otherwise known as Minx 24 fm uh, I use she, her pronouns, and I'll be playing Yolanda Moraga, who uses his, the learned and hopeful playbooks. I am the transillusionist, perpetually uh, facing things to her chagrin person of the party. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Gally Vander. Hello, I'm Morgan. I'm going to be playing Gally Vander. Uh, both of us use they, them pronouns, and we have Gally, our weapon and devout playbook. Um, and, you know, Maybe they can have a have a good time uh, th this session. That's what I'm hoping for. But you know, track record is mixed. <laughs> hey, mixed involves some success. Yeah, it's not all downhill. It's only it's only trending mostly. You gotta downhill. craft a better experience for yourself. And speaking exactly. of crafting, tomorrow like that transition. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at a fractal dragon. I use he him pronouns. And my character is Tamal, who uses she, they pronouns, and the protector and innovator playbooks. And, uh, finally, our busy bee, who booked way too many things today. I don't even want to talk, I mean, I will talk about it, but like, <laughs> this is my fourth stream of the day. My third game. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a day. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to keep my yawns inside and not out, but I'm only human sometimes. Uh, so anywho, I am going to be playing eight, and eight's pronouns are she/her, and you know she's kind of like this stranded individual because her village was destroyed, and she's kind of bound to this octopus named Eight. And Eight spends a lot of time sleeping. His pronouns are he/him, and uh, I think Eight is going to be integral in our mission today. Oh yeah? That is an ominous threat. Uh, but speaking of ominous scenarios... What does Yolanda's study room look like? Why is my study room being framed as the ominous? <laughs> um, because, okay, in the context of the other three members of the group, you are the only one who knows how to study, and if they were to see that to their himbo, bimbo, or vembo brains, it would look ominous, and you know I'm right. Have you seen the rest of our party? Hey, I put a lot of stock in Tamal's ability to think complexly about several different things. I think things. Tamal, Tamal's got it, definitely, but we also have seen what Tamal looks like when he tries to study a rune. We <laughs> saw I don't think what Tamal happened. has ever read the same book more than once. Like, she went through her creator's library and read some of the books, but just one time each, and then she would just put it back on the shelf. Like, I'm done. Does Tamal oh, have, like, a, a photographic memory? Well, how does Tamal's memory work? Like, because it's a, artificial memory. Is, this, is it meant to simulate, like, our memories, or is it... I think it's, you know, pretty good. I don't think it's it's perfect or, or terrible. Okay, cool. That anyway. is unfortunately not Yolanda. Yolanda has probably read through all of her books at least three or four times. She, she has the focus and the strength of will that I do not possess in my everyday life to read books. And, Rude. uh, uh, okay. So we have, we have sort of a motif or we've had a motif throughout all of this uh, particular season with the base, it having a very like maritime kind of feel, especially like crustacean and such. Uh, I kind of think playing off of that her room has a sort of sea anemone kind of design to it but the spot where there would be the feelers i imagine it's sort of akin because magic and because i can say this because this is great 
uh, I'm imagining like uh, a lot of those images of bookstores that have almost like walls that have like sort of built around stacks of books, except hers are actually floating in midair and creating the sort of feeler effect that leads down into like a bunch of bookshelves as well that are actual like like actual shelves as opposed to like shelves that have been made from just the alignment and mm -hmm. arrangement of various books. Uh, there's probably one or two little nooks where she has a chair there. It's a deep sea foam green kind of color to it. There's probably like a tiny little like candle that puts out a disproportionate amount of light to what its actual size is. And there's probably like an actual desk where she sits down to talk with people or chat about various things or do notes. And then there's the, what I'll refer to as the depressed academics side desk, which is just where like probably plates, teacups and or other containers of food materials that she probably should not be eating in place of a meal. But you know, this is what we deal with. That's, that's how her desk is currently. <laughs> that's that's many, her study. Many concern. But I also have only one question. Where is the card that Cyrich has given you? It's by the desk. The smaller desk. Not the one where she meets his people. It's by this, the depression desk. <laughs> it's what I'll refer to it as. Understandable. All right. Now I have one question for everyone else. What failed attempt do you do to try to pull Yolanda out of studying to do something with you? Like a quick montage shot of each of you attempting a thing. O sneaks in to the best of her abilities. And Yolanda's been kind of like an integral experience for O to kind of figure out some of her powers and work through the way like her magic works. But Yolanda hasn't really spent a lot of time with eight per se. So with the deafness of a tiny person who has evil in mind oh like yanks eight off of her head okay okay hey eight if you can get out of my hair woof i need you to do something for me yolanda is doing stuff that's really boring and i think we could entice her if i throw you at her face and you just hang out and you say, hey, A wants to hang, or O wants to hang out with you. Do, do, do you think you can, you can do that? Yeah, I think I can do that. Just like, make sure you don't send me flying into any books or anything. Books are kind of dry on my, on my noodles. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, good. I got you. Um, and then I yeet eight. Fry on my noodles. You know when you touch too many books and it kind of dries your hands out? Like like the paper? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that the content of what you said is, is incorrect. It makes sense to me. It's simply the arrangement of words that you just uttered is the thing that I will be thinking about for- Don't you mean noodling couple. about? Come on. Hey! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say that so that doesn't work in part because she's too focused but she do, and also I kind of imagine as much as O tries to be subtle and oh. or sneaky it does not work mm -mm. you also had a whole out loud conversation <laughs> after sneaking into the room so you yeah. know there's that too <laughs> not a lot of volume control between the two of us you know no <laughs> I, I kind of imagine there's just a moment where she has the she has the traditional like she has the trope of like this like a student reading a giant book that's much bigger than they are kind nope. of thing she's at the nook and like you try and chuck it at her and then out of nowhere from behind the book there is almost like a feathery uh kind of wing but it has the prehensile like kind of like dexterity of like yep. a tentacle mm -hmm. that it just goes and it grabs eight out of the air and you just hear a voice from behind the books uh oh uh, 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 pr present hey you uh you wanna go play Okay, okay, I'm just I'm just gonna grab 
eight back. He doesn't do well, kind of like noodling around on the ground. It's not just, really his. After slowly lowering her head uh, from uh, over the top of the giant books and then lowering it back down, you just hear her say, Maybe another time, oh. Okay. Eight. Yeah. Enjoy flying. <laughs> there's a there's a little twinkle that's the team rocket like blasting off again. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go get him. I'll see you later. Thanks for playing. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, present is accurate because O is a gift. <laughs> next next person, who's who's up? Somebody. Some variation. Um, I have a question first. Mm -hmm. Um, is is their door locked or is it? Because someone just because I just snuck in, so I was just wondering. Is it? Is, is, I don't think she's keeping it locked. I think I think she's keeping it open enough. Actually, I'll describe it like this. Uh. I think Yolanda does the exact same thing that I do at times, where uh, in the midst of being scatterbrained with a lot of different things, I'll like think that I've closed my door, but I didn't all the way, and then I'll start getting like involved with a task like at my desk, and then not if someone came in, I wouldn't realize it until way later. So it's more like that. It's less that she wouldn't lock her door; she just does not remember. Uh... So I think. Part of the reason why this doesn't work is Galley doesn't know how quiet they are and accidentally just like walks right up to you without you hearing and then starts talking. <clears throat> yes. So you wouldn't happen to have time to blast me with magic would you dare I ask why I've gone a little slow and I need to practice moving faster and you know real life situation would be uh, the most practical way of doing it There are several things I could point out that are incorrect about that line of thought, but I will entertain you for solely for the reason that I can keep working on something afterwards. How about this? And then she like, right? Uh, by the way, she hasn't dropped the book this entire uh -huh. time. She's saying all this from behind the book. Of course. You just rate, you see her raise her hand. There's this very long red, orange, and yellow feather appears that for some reason has like a wandish kind of vibe to it and then she absorbs the feather into her hand and then creates five little uh unerringly accurate little like nodes of energy mm -hmm. that for some reason never seem to miss for for whatsoever they they're long range propulsion uh, items of arcane force for some reason. I, I don't know what uh, any sort of synonym or alternative to that would be, but just directs them in your <laughs> towards you and is like, enjoy, Galley. And by the way, they're going much faster than they initially appear for being so tiny. They're they, they are very they're very fast. Oh, you you just see Galley having time of their life, and their actual ulterior motive has completely vanished in the thoughts of actually getting the thing they kind of wanted but didn't think they would get <laughs> does it just turn into like a, an arcane version of like when you leave when someone like in film is like leaving dollar bills along the street but i'm just chucking like magic bolts at you the entire time yeah it's basically that plus the beginning of like every martial arts movie that's just like the martial artist shadow boxing in a gym somewhere it's like put those two together and you got this scene Okay, so and was... you basically, I think it's just you just see Galley just like not literally flexing, but like flexing the sense of like 
most people cannot dodge these things. And I'm sure it's like ramping up to try and like meet like the you're just like not trying to kill someone, obviously, but you didn't expect and... it to like, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is the that's the is the level exact level Galley wants is like, eh. um, <laughs> that's perfectly the calibration they're looking for. Um, well, and it's just like you're you're just trying to get them and like you feel like any other person that like in this base probably wouldn't like make it out of this alive. But Galley's fine, kind of. I think the uh, building off that I think the kind of part is when like you succeed for like a string of them in a row even when the tempo and the rhythm gets like really off time and weird and then they arrange again into five like a really easy spread to dodge and then like she just raises her hand again and does like one of these whoosh, like swish mom, uh, movements and then each of them spreads apart into five separate sets of their own and then you watch as five of those individual sets just disappear, and then they start appearing like right next to you. <laughs> That's you've the never, fail condition. <laughs> you've never seen Galley so excited in your life. <laughs> well, Galley seems to have found excitement from this um, sorcerous barrage. Um, it's so something along those it's, lines. It's just like home. Uh, so. Let's see how Tamal fares. Yeah. We're not addressing that. Uh, Tamal comes in uh, and she's reading a book uh, that she's borrowed from Cyrish or somebody. She's got like a like rune crafting and sigils for babies type book. Uh, and she's she's going through it and I think doesn't say anything and just starts browsing around in your books to look for other ones to borrow. Uh, but I imagine that your collection is really hard for anyone else to look through. It's... So, uh, none of you know this, but I have actually been rolling percentile dice for every single time any of you has been doing something. Uh, you you got lower than O did. Amazing. <laughs> uh, Galley's lasted the longest because... Galley got uh, remarkably a 69th, nice. Uh, and like, oh, got like 30s. Tamal got 24. Amazing. I, I think it's. Okay, uh, let me uh, let me ask you, or let me propose this to see if this works. You know, those moments sure. where like you take in either too much information or someone starts talking in a way where your brain just kind of like short circuits from it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think. It turns into like one of those scenes in a movie where someone's like, you know, if you're interested in going through this sort of process, might I also suggest this? And if you follow the principles that extend from that, from that subset of knowledge, you'll be able to go into these particular disciplines. And there's a distinct paper, although it's a bit contentious and debated amongst uh -huh. some of other illusionist scholars. It turns into one of those That's where awesome. the original question was just like, how do you organize these? Like, where do I find the next book? Right, right. Her, I think the fail condition here is just more that she she I think she's like scatterbrained enough that she tries to explain it, but then she starts going off to research something she forgot about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and doesn't so explain like, oh, let it. Let me tell like, you about like the magical Dewey Decimal System and why it's terrible how I've invented my own way better system. It's like it only works if you understand Yolanda's absurd. Like record keeping system, which no one does because uh -huh. she's never explained it. Because every time she tries to explain it, it goes that way. Yeah, and uh -huh. I think I think that Tamal is too like kind-hearted to like interrupt or to tell you that like she has no idea what you're talking about. So she just like nods along, her eyes kind of glaze over, which is impressive because they are already made of stone, and then she just reaches over and picks a book completely at random and is like yep this is the one i was looking for thank you that's so helpful and it's like a like a horticulture of undersea creatures book or something uh, and today we learned what tamal truly looks like as a statue uh, <laughs> yeah, she just... uh, all right then there is uh uh, I want all of you to go around and give me your best, most genuine attempt to get Yolanda to do something with you. 
All right. I think after um, some time, oh, he's able to retrieve eight. Honestly, he flew so far. And, like, it didn't make any sense because there was a ceiling. But still, he managed to just get yeeted into outer space. So it took, like, oh, was walking around, like, the, the base and just, like, listening for his little shouts. Um, and eventually, like, he was hanging on an edge with, like, one little noodly arm just kind of holding himself up. Um so after like a, a bit of a respite and like a snack break, uh, Ode does return, and this time she's not being s- stealthy. She's kind of walking in. She accidentally like opens the door with a little bit too much force, and it bangs off the back of the wall. Oh, whoops! Ah. And then on her walk, um, like to kind of like navigate your space to get to you, she knocks over a couple books, um, steps on some paper. <laughs> Um, knocks over like an inkwell um, but doesn't like do anything about it it just kind of feels like part of the course of her traveling through a space and then when she gets to you um, I imagine you still have like a giant book uh, in front of you and you look much the same you did a few hours ago oh just well has not moved <laughs> the pages are, are moving and the book might be different not that oh would notice though <laughs> uh, I, oh I- Sorry. Actually, if I can add, if it's okay to interrupt, to add one detail, I think, to make it more ridiculous. I think it's the same book from earlier, but it's because she's already read through a whole bunch of other books and she's back at the first book checking her work. I love that. Uh, checking the references, <laughs> the, the book material, now she's read all the references in the book. <laughs> I just imagine it's like, the like before you were like two thirds of the way through and now you're somehow in the first 10% because yes. you like cycled all the way around. <laughs> so for viewers that is an easter egg for O completely doesn't notice and she does like her best attempt but like try and clear her throat uh, 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 um. <clears> throat> um hey Yolanda um so like that was fun and everything I, I did manage to find eight and he was holding on for dear life but um I was just kind of wondering You've talked a lot about how I I do a really good job at just not having any other feelings than, like, extreme joy, positivity, and this almost strange sense of not feeling any fear, anger, or sadness. And I I, I guess I kind of wanted to talk to you about that. There's... I, I'm imagining there for some reason if like if it was like a comic book panel or like this was like a cartoon that this was being done, the book starts lowering, but the sound cue that the the audio engineer chose for it is the equivalent of like when a creaky door is just barely <sighs> kind of like like uh, opening up, and she it's like lowers to where you see like. Uh, she she has the book like just uh lowered beneath her nose and her eyes uh, what i mean to say is that i think i think i felt real anger today and eight didn't eat it it, it, it just it, it was there the the anger i i tried to wake up galley and they just kept sleeping, and it made me really upset because Gally said that they were going to play with me, and I brought a ball and everything, and then they just kept sleeping, and I was really... What do I do with these feelings? Wow, Gally got burned by the nicest per- nicest voice person ever. <laughs> and it's running through my mind, I'm like, yeah, this checks out 100%. <laughs> I, I think she, like, raises, like, an eyebrow and just like lowers the book down like sets it for some reason there's another desk right next to her that was not there like two seconds ago um dear do you not feel things very often oh no that's part of my 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 bound pack to eight that i sacrifice all of the negative emotions and he makes sure that I, I don't ever feel sadness or anything that would remind me of my traumatic past. I mean, there's... Well, frankly, I can't say t- can't say too much against the desire to leave one's negative emotions, as I would very happily take a, a decrease in my own, but I 
don't see the harm in understanding that you have lost things. You don't have to go straight into it. I mean, you don't have to wade and dive into the depths of trauma and sadness, but you're more than welcome, and it's probably healthier in due time to just wade through it, even if it's just at the surface of it for a little bit. So you're saying that I should sit down with Eight and I should maybe ask if he could... Uh, Eight, can you share some of my memories that I've just completely forgotten because they were too sad? Ugh, fine. But, like, we should probably sit down for this. Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, Yolanda, this has been really good, really good. Um, I'm gonna go sit in some water. And, uh, if you want to join me, uh, I'm sure I have a whole lot to unload. Here, I, I, I think we should probably make this more of a regular thing with or without eight being there i will make time okay that would be really nice do you want to put your feet in the water with me sure <gasps> yes i can show you what happens when my feet turn into crab feet it's like three hours later <laughs> <laughs> Just, just uh, somewhere within that three hours, there's there's got to be like a still where she's just like, just like <laughs> biting her own hand, just like, woof, woof. Oh like there is a woof uttered at some point throughout that entire period. <laughs> gotta love carcinization. Yeah, it all comes back to crab. <laughs> all right, I guess let's keep going. Kigali, what is your genuine attempt? Sorry, I just roll a dice to decide which of which the way the 50 50 I was going with in my head goes. Um, interesting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is the oh no, that's for sure. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to say that while you were drinking water. Do it. Do it. Do it. Go full. Go. Go. Go full hog. Go. Go do it. Yeah, that was that was what the roll was for, and the answer was yeah, I could do it. I'm like okay. Um, so, Galley's back in in your room again. Um, their hair is wet because it looks like they've showered after this workout for them. Um, and they're. Hmm. I want to know if, like, you wouldn't call them chipper, but, like, ever so slightly lively livelier than usual. <laughs> um. But, like, they definitely don't look chipper. They're, like, definitely looking a little more, like, a little serious. Like, they just, like, have something they're about to ask you, and they're just, like, thinking of the way to word it. But it's also galley, so you're like, will you have words for me or not? So you and just, so, do you just come to talk to her in that case? Yeah, um, but like, def but unlike last time, it's a lot. They're like standing like a couple meters away, like in your room, but not like sneaking up on you accidentally this time. Um, and they're just like like hand to face, like thinking over what to say, and they're and they're deaf and they're like almost like inching towards you as they become slightly more sure, and that's kind of where they're like almost like ghostly floating towards you as they like figuring out the word for it. They're trying to pick out of the air, just like reaching almost, and they can't quite get it yet. I think you actually see a feather appear right above your head and there's a little cloud that goes around it. And it's like, when you find the right words. And they try to reach for the feather and it just whiffs. <laughs> um, and they, you just like hear another awkward silence for a little bit longer. And they're like, something's different about you. She 
She closes the book. All right. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's just very noticeable. Almost like inside you've straight in like your, your metaphorical insides of like something. It's a mix of like, it feels like something in you is cracked and something in you has gotten much stronger and I don't know where all the balance lies also those wings are new but also and then just like that thought trails off as they're like they still don't have the words yet but they're trying but I think it's good I, I think I think on another time it might have hit in a comfortable spot for her, but I think it just it's like when you're trying to set something uh, like uh, actually another perfect way to compare this it's when you're trying to like put up a frame on a wall and you're just trying to straighten it out and you're just like yeah, it's perfect and then you back up and you're just like it's like the two degrees off that just won't like be straightened out and you're just looking at it like why will you not do this i think you you hit the emo you have that happen on an emotional level is what you say like on another day if you just pivoted on one or two words it would have been fine but i think you actually hit a sore spot for mm. her and i think she responds well not to put too fine a point on it but i would assume you would be the one to know what it means to talk about cracked things. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I think Gala is just like taken aback, less like, like, Hmm. I wouldn't say offended. Definitely a little bit hurt, but not a lot of it hurt, but a little bit hurt. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, eh. is it is it two degrees of hurt? It's just the two degrees it, you can't just. It's, it's like a mild crab pinch amount of hurt. Yeah, it's almost like. It's like, the the little bit of squeak of pain where you almost cry and you don't kind of hurt, and then you choke it back down. Oh. <laughs> where you're like. But, you know, uh, so like, they, so they like swallow that in for a second. They're like, you know what? Fair enough. Um, we can do this another time. Maybe never. And they're just going to like, could turn around. And walk away. Um, cool. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> if you were um, wondering what the other no option would have been. Just abrupt, abrupt transition to tomorrow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Gally. Person, the person making a like uh, arranging the comic itself forgot a panel somewhere in between there. We just had to <laughs> tumble and fill on this scene already. It's like, what? Wait, there's a there's a gap in here. Did we like skip a volume in the manga or something? Uh, so uh, Tamal comes in, uh, and she has uh, a plate of food for you. She has made you a snack. Uh, because she noticed that you were not feeding yourself or taking care of yourself well uh, while you're doing this. Uh, I think it's because she has no sense of taste and does not even regularly necessarily eat except to be polite. She's just sort of like tried her best at making you a little snack. Uh, I think that she asked what would be a good like a light refreshment for you. Uh, and heard that she should make a cucumber sandwich. So she has done that by taking an entire cucumber and slicing it lengthwise like it was a sub sandwich and then putting like some slices of meat and cheese on it and then like p 
putting like some sort of condiment like a like a peanut butter or something on there where she was like okay what's like a good nutritious thing it has yeah the you word need this for in energy it. It yeah so close to being something right. like you know what i would try like if they had a big enough cucumber i might try that Right, and then right. you went to the peanut butter. I like cucumbers. Uh, I love cucumbers, but not cucumber and peanut butter. No, but peanut butter. No. I'm right? saying it was good, almost good to be something right up until <laughs> the peanut butter. Like the cucumber and then the meat and the cheese. I'm like, okay. You know, like it's a weird salad sandwich. Mm -hmm, it could work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That and means then... I am perfectly achieving my goal Aww. creating this food. Uh, and I think there's a, a cup of tea that's just regular tea as well. Because uh, she noticed your other cup of tea was just stone cold sitting next to you. <laughs> I think it was like stone cold, but I think there was still there's enough to drink at the bottom of it. But it's the kind of thing where like she's forgotten about it for like six hours, so she's mm -hmm. been steeped tea there, oh, yeah. a tea bag there for like six hours. Really, really tannic now. Oh god. I had I had some cups of tea like that in college, and I sort of developed a fondness for it. Same, I... but it's not okay. <laughs> it's not, See, okay, no. Great. Here's the thing. So the six hour one, no, but like heavy steep tea. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. How long is heavy steeped for you? Um, like a good chunk of time of non of any non-American non-white tea. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, I think. Um, I I think she 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 has a much smaller book now. This mm -hmm. is this is just her. This is probably more akin to like a notebook that she's writing things down in. But when she sees you come in, I, I feel like she also hears you come in because I just stone. weigh a thousand pounds and I made stone. Yep. And I think I think she actually does accept the sandwich, and and you see her uh like conjure up just like a small like cutting board and like start <laughs> like flaying down like the little bits of, of cucumber slices into things and she's like oh wait 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 oh, and you okay just and you notice that on on the far edge that you've been cutting towards there is a rune inscribed into the cucumber it's like the most the most simple basic enhancement rune it's just like a line that then like splits into two lines she says, I wanted to see if uh, that helped with the, the taste. So don't cut that part. She... I think the, uh, she she plays around with reality, but not. it's usually been for the purposes of illusion. And I think she likes, like holds her hand out and she just tries to shift things back just a little bit. <laughs> So that's just, right just slightly rewind time. Yeah, just uh. slightly. It's very localized. Like it's not like she could just do like chaos control and just time stop an entire region. Uh, for the sake of the cucumber, I will allow you to do this one time. <laughs> I I think she takes a uh, a very like big uh, like bite out of it with with peanut butter and everything and all. And Heck yeah. I uh, do you do you think it works, Alex? I think it's more interesting. Uh do you I think could, it works? I could do another embrace your chimera. I think that's what I did last time. I was trying to learn runes Go for and failed. It. I'm okay with that. Go I'm okay with it. whatever the result is, uh, but I think this is what is this what is, is Tamal's approach to this? That's a great question. Would it be what optimistic? Is... Optimi uh, it's, I can hear an argument for optimistic. I can hear a solid argument for relaxed. And I can hear a argument for Tamal attempting and probably failing to be logical. Right. Let's call this optimistic because she is kind of taking this on faith a little cool. bit. And you see that she is less relaxed than she normally is. She has like a little like anticipation in her stance. Perfect. So I'll be okay. rolling a d6 and a d8. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go. Okay, got a nine. All right. Okay, so uh, on seven to nine, you pick one from that list. I can read that loud to you. Um, either some yourself or someone around you get hurt. <laughs> Something important <laughs> breaks in an unintended way. The situation escalates. The effect is only temporary or unstable. There's a price to pay for success. 
All of this became much more <laughs> ominous for a sandwich. Yeah, I love this. It's really... We have escalated this situation from sandwich eating to something more. Uh, oh, let's say there's a price to pay for success. There's a price. You have ideas for the price? Or... <laughs> no, that was me throwing the ball at okay. you so okay. that I didn't have to deal with it. Fair enough. Okay. Ask the uh, buck. For, for first, the buck. First, it is successful. Uh, Leolanda, what is your reaction to this sandwich? Uh, I... I this think... enhanced sandwich. <laughs> enhanced sandwich. This is this is our session, people. Uh, I kind of imagine it that I'm not saying because of the particular flavor balance, but I think it it ends up having uh the first thing that comes to mind of all things is uh, was it the like I think it's Elvis, uh, mm, Elvis Presley mm -hmm. sandwich kind of combination. I forget if it was like bacon and peanut butter, or if it was like yeah, bananas, yeah. peanut butter, and yeah. like something else. Where like something like that. It, it was like a kind of odd combination that actually like was a favorite of his, and it is a pretty staple. Like one of those like this shouldn't work. This works. Why this has no right to work? Kind of things. Nice. And. I, I think it actually, pay, like, she's very happy about having it. I think she actually sets the book down entirely. And she's just <laughs> taking a few minutes to, again, if anyone ever watches the show and does fan art, for the love of God, please do fan art of this moment of a, <laughs> of a disaster transbian doing, a, trying to eat a, a literal cucumber sandwich. Oh. I think she has it, and I think there's actual like slight tears in her face, like yeah. around her eyes. But I, I think, I think to uh, at least to Mall, if it's okay for me to say this, I think to Mall thinks that because the sandwich is re either really good or it didn't work at all. Right. You can see that she's a little concerned, and she says like, "Now I'm hoping that the enhancement rune will affect the nutritional value of the sandwich because I know you don't like to take breaks." too often so this should set you up for like the next you know hours if not days uh i'm not sure exactly how strong the effect will be but i'm i'm hoping it'll last what's the effect armor <laughs> and i'm happy to pay the pay the cost uh myself as as okay. a, a condition or whatever i think Keep going. Keep going. God. Uh, I I think she actually like stopped and she was like Did you know that my mom used to try and do these kinds of things and so did my grandmother? Um You're going to need to be more specific about what <laughs> these kind of things are. Sorry. Uh I she she does like you see her like she summons like a small like little like knife to just slightly scrape off some of the peanut butter i think it it, it oddly works for her taste palette because on estradiol you end up having weird cravings it uh, was chunky peanut butter though so oh, very difficult for her to scrape <laughs> off all of it <laughs> but i i think she ends up saying no my my grandmother uh when she was around she used to actually do little bits of like veggies and meats swirled around with one another we didn't always used to have a lot of money but uh, she always tried to make sure that we were going to be okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I, I am sorry about that. I never, I suppose I never thought about the fact that humans need to pay money to eat every day. That must be it's... incredibly burdensome. It, it was more the, the particular area and world I grew up in. It was not quite uh, amenable to everyone being uh, the kind of way that they were, but it worked mm. out. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is the first thing done today where I feel like someone came in hoping to do something for me as opposed to seeing what uh, I could do for them. At this point, you just hear a booming voice from like a few hallways down. Um, like somewhere on the other side of the base, but it echoes clearly. Who took the last of my peanut butter? Uh oh. 
It was the chunky kind too. You know how hard it is to get the right texture of chunks. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it seems that I have committed a faux pas. That's uh, that's a good way of putting it. There is. Should we stomping should we... in the sound of doors being slammed open and closed? I didn't realize that food ownership was such a complex topic, and not having any of my own to uh, share, I suppose. Oh dear. I I, I think. Uh... You see her trying to like conjure an illusion to indicate the door's closed and locked. <laughs> <laughs> she, and, but while that's happening, she's like, "Well, in actuality, there are a lot of uh, various discourses and debates that happen about the ownership of certain kinds of foods because they are of certain relevant cultural levels to people of various regions and such. And people have oh, a dear. rather strong emotional and social and historical oh, attachment to them." My mother made oh. that peanut butter for me. <laughs> <laughs> focuses to make a door originally it was only going to have one big padlock now it for some reason it has the full like string of locks along the side of it <laughs> so the, the ending with like the long goofy chain that connects to the one on the top that locks yep, yep. all the rest of them like we're not here I'll just be uh, very quiet what do we hear <laughs> I need you to roll me something. Fuck. <laughs> what do I roll? Uh, go ahead and mm -hmm. roll. Brace yourself. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this reminds me of like a custom move, like used in like a like a, a group's like mask game where we don't. It's just like one for like when they do something so ridiculous, hoping it'll work. It's like when you push buttons, roll plus nothing. Oh, actually, no. What what this sounds like? Actually, go ahead and roll to defend your friends using with your with great power move. Hell yeah! Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> when wait, others wait, around I... you are in danger while you are currently occupied with another important task, choose. It sounds like you've chosen. You abandon oh, your forgot. task to protect those in danger. I didn't think this would be remotely relevant to this session. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so roll to defend your friends with one free point and the uh, assist your allies with if someone to assist yeah. you gain experience but mark a condition uh, basically so... you get plus an extra plus one to your roll okay what am I rolling with defending my friends uh, uh, I'm gonna say not relaxed in this moment nope definitely not relaxed um, I'm gonna uh, go with I'm leaning um, towards optimistic yeah, um, opti either optimistic or energetic sounds I'm also like the with optimistic because the opposite of optimistic is anxious, and right now that feels like the most appropriate. <laughs> I'm backwards. I'm backwards assigning the emotion here. I, nice. I, you know what? I, I agree with this call. This is accurate. So optimistic. That's two d six. Uh. Well. Nope. Oh, wait, wait, no, with the plus one, that's seven exactly. Hey, Yo. you're moving. You're moving plus safe. one. <laughs> okay, Jeez. I'll defend your friends. Uh, you defend your target, but the fuck. Uh, so it's either shift their focus onto you or you take an emotional toll. It feels like emotional toll is applicable. It's emotional toll! Yeah, you, you want to go ahead and mark that uh, anxious. Yep, there's anxious. There's, there, there's words of anxious. There's uh, experience of anxious. Cool, perfect. All right. We're gonna cut to the next scene. I, I agree with this decision. <sighs> okay, next scene. That was so fun. You're still in your study. Uh, suddenly. Oh, wait, so would that be insecure? Yeah, I need to update the ones on your sheet, but on the new okay. version, it's anxious. Okay, why? I haven't updated that part. I forgot to. Okay. No worries. Anxious also makes sense for optimistic, yes. so yes, um, that will be that one going down. Cool. Uh, so for now, uh, you're back in your study, and suddenly you find a playing card in the middle of your book. And Sarish is standing right there. Hello, dear. Hello. How are you doing? You see her, like, before she says anything, she's like, one moment. She just goes over to the door and she for I think she forgets for a second because of how angry she is that it, she made an illusion, not an actual door with yeah. locks. So she starts trying to go through it, and then she remembers like halfway through. Oh no, wait, I, that's not real. 
Uh... Right, okay, that's what I thought. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this book, and we're gonna go for a walk. Great. I, I, I'm leaving my card as a bookmark. Perfect. And she closes it, like, with the card that she slid into your book, poking out the top. Do I want to ask about the locks? All I will say is... Don't take someone's peanut butter. That seems like generally fair advice. Oh, um, there is a moment where her facial expression wonders if she is trying. If she's trying to parse if that is or isn't an innuendo. <laughs> and decides that it isn't. I think you hear her like grumble. She doesn't say it loudly yeah. enough to be like a clear statement, but she, you, it's audible enough that it's a grumble of like, that's not a euphemism. <sighs> and I feel like on that, we're going to cut because the other scene I would like to have before our session wraps up. I would like to have one scene with, because uh, I don't think we've, we've had a lot of time with Tamal spending time with Kelly. but we haven't had a lot of time with O spending time with Tamal or O spending time with Kelly one on one. So I would like. Two shortish scenes of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the first one would absolutely be a repeat of O trying to wake up Gally. Um, it's it is a regular occurrence, and like she gets creative. Um, and I think fine, like so she gets creative in the sense like she'll jump on their belly. Um, she'll try to roll them off of like the 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 base. Um, they'll she'll sing whale songs to them. Um, really all to no effect. I, I need a, uh, a spin-off they... timeline where Galley becomes a dog owner, because... <laughs> <laughs> Galley with a puppy sounds like the best worst fig. Right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, the final attempt of O is that she, um, you know, dips her hands in water and then turns them into crab pincers. Um with her transform, and she's gonna, like, pinch... That is so impressive. <laughs> she's gonna pinch their arms, like, little... Hey! Hey! Come on, do you wanna... I have a ball! Do you wanna play catch? Hmm. Wait, I just have to see... I have to calibrate the level of reaction Gally has. Because the first instinct is two's here, because I'm dialing it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And I think, so they're probably like back to you right now, like kind of like sleeping sideways and you're like okay. pinching them. And they like turn abruptly toward you. They're like. Oh. And you just like see their eyes open and it just definitely looks like someone who <laughs> has just woken up and it doesn't look great. Like. Hi. You should be careful about that. About my pincers? Clack clack? Making me. Oh, good morning. Do you want some water? I can scoop some in my pincers. Please. Okay, I'll get you some water. And I, I don't know the mechanics of it, Angela. I don't know. This is magic. Uh... <laughs> They managed to scoop some water in their pincers. Um, mm, the nice thing about pincers is they can poke plot holes into our story and we don't have to worry yes! about it. <laughs> oh, they pierce through the competition. So she scoops up the water and will like bring you like a, a pincer full. Uh, here you go. Yeah, you gotta, like drinks it almost like desperately. Um, <laughs> and, and then you like see them like sit on the bed for like a couple seconds really groggy and they just start to wake up a little bit more now that they're uh, not quite so dehydrated. And they're just like ignoring me. Do you, you want to hang out? Uh, well, I'm awake now, so uh, sure. And so like they stand up, they're still not fully there, but you know, it, it's getting better. It's the, the, the trends up <laughs> getting it's going up. Perfect. Um, I think O will lead you out to some kind of like large open space. Maybe there's like a fountain in between. Um, but there's enough room for them to, I think they present to you this 
ball of coral. Um, and with her pincer, or her pincered hand. So this is from my hometown. We would always throw coral balls, and it was kind of fun, but like careful because like your hands might get cut up, which is why I have pincers for hands now. Galley catches it barehanded, as if it was anything else. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, I'm ready. So do I throw it at you really hard, or is it like an arc shot? Like, what are we doing? Oh, whatever you'd like. I'm ready. So is eight. Eight, wake up. Come on. Uh, on a scale of one to Severs Valleys in two, or Severs Mountains in two, how hard do you want me to throw this? Uh, like a three? Okay. <laughs> and Gally's like, alright, I understand now. <laughs> so they throw it. Like, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's fast, but it's not, you know, baseball pitcher fast. It's like, person trying to be a baseball pitcher fast. Excellent, excellent. I wonder... Um, so would this be considered, um, when I share a moment of intense emotion with someone? I feel, I feel like not yet, but we can leverage it to that in a second. Okay. I still have to ask one follow-up question to that move. Mm -hmm. well, if you, if you find the way to weave that question into, uh, into the conversation, then <laughs> yeah, I think we'll, we'll hit that. Okay, perfect. Ah, uh, and like, they're gonna throw the, the, what was it in chat? Uh... Oh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, they throw the coral ball, and so what? What you've never talked about yourself a whole lot. What's something from where you're from that you know you like to hang out with to remind you of the good times? Catches things for a second, just like throwing it back casually. Um, they almost overthrow you, but like you know, not in the sense of like too strong, but like. Misjudging the distance, like when you're, when you're tossing baseballs, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and they're like, I don't know. I uh spent a long time wandering around. About twelve when I left home. Catches. Uh, now softball pitches or yeah, softball pitches it back at you. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, okay. Did you ever have any favorite places or favorite people that you met along the way? On my way up from the water, I once met a frog person in a top hat. They were really kind. We had a tea party. And, well, you know, and then they sent me on my way. They told me where the guild was. So, like, that that was a really nice experience. I'm sure you met a lot of really cool people along the way. And she'll uh, underhand throw the uh, coral ball back. Yeah, and it's just... Oh, wait. Prop. Yeah. Um, and it, like the thing was like, speaking of tea, actually, is a good example. So, um, there was a, a tea shop owner I met once. We'd stayed in a place, um, not quite longer than usual, but you know, about average. It was a couple months, and yeah. uh, it was a very tropical place. So it was just hot and yeah. Uh, her shop was uh really like uh, had just like really long overhang was shady so i was there a lot and had a lot of love talks play a lot of games That's i learned how to, lovely. learned how to play um dang, i need we're, we're just going to say i would be like it would be learned how to play you know like go or something but you'd use whatever fantasy inward equivalent of go would be mm -hmm. <laughs> like pebbles or something it's probably <laughs> onward <laughs> forward charge <laughs> Advanced. Synonyms exist for a reason. Uh, um, and yeah, it was it was a really great uh, time. Eventually, we had to leave. But, you know, it was good while it lasted. That's I got got pretty lovely. decent. Yeah, it was, it was really good. I haven't seen her again since. But was... Would you ever visit her again? Yeah, I kind of forgot where it is, but yeah, oh. I've been I've been a lot of places, and sometimes and, uh, I like to forget a lot of it. 
sometimes. I understand that. But at the same time, I, it would be so amazing if I could show my friends my home world. Under the water, it's wonderful and it's so beautiful down there. You see the world through the lens of the water and it's just, it's so much more vibrant than it is in this place with all this air, you know? I, I think you would do really well under the water. And they look at you just like confused, but more like not confused as in what you're saying, but like they like touch their neck as if like, I don't have kills. <laughs> um, you sure? I don't know if I'm quite built for it. Oh, uh, I don't really know how you're... I've been wondering, like, why nobody else really lives in the water? Like, why are you all up here? Is it... The air feels very thin. I think that's maybe just the, the difference between us. But, and they, and she catches the coral ball. But that's, that's okay. I think we would make it work. It's, it's important. You, you have all become my friends and you're all very important to me. And I, I think I've done a good job at not standing out too much. I mean, aside from eight, you know, eight, eight sometimes can be a bit of a grumpy pants, but, and she throws the coral ball back at you. Do you think that I fit in? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're not particularly different from us, really. Um, I mean, uh, I don't have a I fire I... in my stomach like Tamal, although I think that's so cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess let's put it this way. Oh, like, if you didn't tell me you were from the ocean, I just kind of wouldn't have noticed. I oh, figured, huh. you know, I travel a lot too, so I'm used to like seeing people like go to new places and. Um, and that sounds really similar to me, so. Thank you for I just never think... treating me differently. Yeah. Don't make people, don't let people make you feel unwelcome. You, you definitely belong here. Thank That's you. That's never a question. Hear that, eight? I belong. I'm just, I don't know what you're talking about. And that... <laughs> Galley picks up a rock on the ground and like throws it full force towards your skull and it like it's not even hitting you but it like just barely misses eight <laughs> you hear a low-pitched scream it almost sounds like when a cat is upset and they do like the oh. but it's gravelier and it's eight I, I feel like that's a perfect cut point for this scene unless you all have anything else you want to wait i have one last okay. thing and as you hear the growling, and I go up, like, I just whisper to eight so quietly that even uh -oh can't hear. Like, you leave her alone, or I will toss you into Tamal's forge, and no one will see you again. <laughs> eight doesn't make a sound, but his little legs start to shake. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I've been waiting a while to drop that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we cut to uh, O and Tamal's scene to uh, lighten the mood, uh, much like the air up here is lighter, uh, one thing I realized during that conversation is I guess you could say that there is a correlation between height and air thickness. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Tamal, no. no. That was a stretch even for you. Nonsense. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> I love that two reactions. Oh that was a stretch. That was good. That is exactly where my puns operate. Where where one person goes, why? And then everyone else goes, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. So I think, oh, you actually get, uh, like, if we have some sort of long, long range way of communicating with each other, you get, you get called up to, uh, to Tamal's, like, workshop that she has set up in the whale um and she is working at her forge uh she's got you know her her little her little temporary forge that's set up here um 
and it she's working with some sort of weird like silvery metal that is almost sort of like splashing and moving like quicksilver when she hits it uh and she's clearly like just started working on it. it's just sort of like a formless thing that she's like getting heated up and, and starting with um so as you come in she says uh hi hi there oh i was hoping uh that i could make you a little present and i wanted to consult with you on exactly what it could be um and she's like you know takes a minute to see your reaction yes i love gifts these i i don't know what i need or want maybe like a third r like if i could have an arm out of my shoulder Ooh, that we might need an artificer for that. I'm not sure if I could do a whole third arm. I mean, I, I could, but it wouldn't move. Uh, so I don't oh. know how useful it would be. Okay, but I don't want a decorative one. Mm, what I was thinking is I've noticed that you have been making use of your, your shape-shifting abilities, uh, but it requires there to be water around. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, what if we went on a mission to a, a, a desert or something and there wasn't any water there, right? So I've been working oh. on learning some rune magic Wait, and i thought Tamal, Tamal, mm -hmm. hold on there's places without water oh yes i've been through many of them just just vast vast deserts of only sand or there's a thing called a salt flat uh where you have a sea that's just been drained away all the water gone and oh, just the no. salt left that's very horrible. very desolate starkly beautiful places sometimes but not not good for uh for people like you or honestly people who aren't like me frankly i don't think i probably could have crossed that salt flat if i needed to do things like eat and drink uh but i thought if i'm using this uh this elemental half silver metal then what i can do is it has a, an elemental affinity with water so if i Whoa. inscribe a water rune on it whatever I make with it should be able to generate some water for you. And then you could Whoa. use that for whatever you need it. So I don't know. I was a trident seems maybe a little stereotypical for a water dweller, but we could do a, a weapon, a piece of armor, like a gauntlet, a, a necklace or a torque, you know, whatever you're thinking of, uh, whatever you'd like. Let's go necklace. That seems fun. Yolanda gave me a really nice necklace and I, I kind of enjoyed wearing it. Perfect. Good. Yes. Yeah, so this will be just sort of a a nice thick band, and uh, we can we can get that. I suppose I need to fit it for you. Uh, and she like takes out like a like a measuring tape to uh, you know sort of like see what dimensions she'll need to work with and stuff. Okay. Pardon me. I'll just left. Be right there. Right. Good. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. Well. Uh, this should should take me a little bit to work on, but then you will just be able to like voop, have water come right out of it, and oh. uh, and use it for whatever you need. That is so cool. At least cool. If, if I can get the runes right, we're hoping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Tamal, can I ask you for like a huge favor? Sure. I have always wanted to roast corn, <laughs> and you're like. You've got a fire on you all the time. Uh huh. Can I can I roast some corn on the cob? In, in your in forge? my tummy. <laughs> I don't like how that sounds, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is like extremely delighted. Uh, and she says, "I'm learning so much about food this week. This is great. Yes. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, good. I will I caution you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get food, um, legally." So oh. that's going to be up to you. If you take someone else's corn, uh -huh. they will get really mad at you, uh, is something that I've learned. Well, at least it works for peanut butter. I don't know about corn. But be careful. Um, maybe ask around and and see if you can, I don't know, barter for it or something. But just uh, I would be absolutely happy to uh, to lend you use of my uh, my tummy flames for yeah. your corn roasting. Oh, that is so kind of you. You know, I thought maybe my question was going to be a little corny, but I'm so glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, that sounds that sounds great. And uh, 
yes that's that's wonderful all right this worked out this worked out uh should i should i do a roll for making this thing or anything no no it just goes <laughs> um we're good let's see actually um <laughs> Oh, that's what I wanted to do actually. Now that we're now that we're talking, because uh, I think I I think I say it's it's so nice to see you uh, smiling and and having a good time. Oh, I was I was getting a little worried about you on our last mission. I admit, uh, it sounded like you were you were having a bit of a tough time, and I just wanted to say that I'm very proud of you for going through all of those trials and for. You've, you've just done a spectacular job of maintaining your composure and getting through everything with a smile on your face. And it's very inspiring to me as well to have such a wonderful teammate. Tomorrow. Like and I'm inspire. using my inspire move. <laughs> Go ahead and roll inspire. All right. I can't wipe my tears away because I have crabs for hands. <laughs> <laughs> Great. See, now I'm just picturing that they're no longer pincers. You've just, like, transformed your hands into <laughs> full-on crabs. crabs. Each yep. hand is a crab. Yeah, uh, and I can control on, each of the pincers on each side. On on the plus side, though, because the tears are, are, are liquidy, they can allow you to shape-shift your face so that they can <laughs> flow down. It's, it's the classic waterbending thing, where if you if you sweat enough or cry enough, right, that's why the most powerful waterbenders are depressed waterbenders. Just cry, and you'll be fine. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I got a nine, uh, which means that you can either clear a condition, gain an experience, or gain advantage on your next move. I'm gonna take that experience. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. This reminds me, I forgot to activate one of mine that I keep act like triggering and forget to use. Mm hmm. All of you have sinned. All of you have forgotten your own books, your own <laughs> abilities. I say this yep. as a person who entirely didn't expect with great power to trigger on this. Oh, it, worked. <laughs> it just fit perfectly for the entire premise of that scene. Yep. Okay. And yeah, I think I think you were able to just make the thing, especially because like Yolanda's already rolled to like make a thing for O to solve this problem. So like it's not it's not making it's not overcoming an obstacle that is currently present and imminent, right? Cool. The all right, luck nice. of a very anxious mage working for you. Yes. Uh, all right, we are one last scene to wrap up. Uh, keep this short, but Yolanda had something you wanted to do to wrap us up. Um, yeah. I think with Sairish, I think it's just two quick things. One, with Sairish, I, I think they go for a walk, and I'm inclined to think it's Probably a lot of Sairish um, embarrassing her to some extent and or like making her blush. But I think this is actually the first time she doesn't she doesn't meet it with full like I I am a disaster lesbian and I don't know what to say mm -hmm. response. I think I think she actually tries to have conversation. It's maybe not the best, but I think it's a, I think it's clear at least as a result from the conversation that like she is trying to be amenable to it whatever that connection is going to be perfect and i think the other thing is that she goes back and i don't know if she actually finished the sandwich i think in the middle of like that scene playing out she doesn't actually like finish eating it but she still sees the rune on the sides and I think there is a period of time where she she looks up like after taking like another bite, which probably at this point it, it's debatable as to the actual flavor being good or not. But she looks up and she spots uh, an enchantment book she hasn't looked at in an ages among like one of the precariously angled books above her head. And she gets an idea and she starts tinkering with something. Uh, I think there's like a stone amulet that's shaped kind of like a shield and she starts uh, she starts working on it and she uses the rune inspiration that Tamal left her of enhancement she's like there's something here let me see what I can do with this 
And uh, I don't know if you want to, what the conclusion of that you, we want to indicate the other folks, uh, Amr, but uh, I did roll while some of the scenes were happening for book learning to yeah. test out an idea because I asked Amr what they, it what they would think well. if... So yeah, you're able to I rolled a thing. 10, so it went very well. Because yeah. I had an idea of... Uh, Tamal tends to have access to that, uh, obviously to the forge at all times, but I've kind of wondered a lot. This is, most, this is partially Ange wondering this and also partially Yolanda wondering like, what would happen if you were able to channel some of that energy from the forge into things you make more like transportable as opposed to just having to like open it up and take directly from the forge like you were able to like maybe keep a portion of it like basically what i'm saying is i want to give you the ability to make a fire sword if you wanted one or something of that kin without having to actually be like i will stick it straight oh, into the forge or alternatively the more mundane reason she was thinking of it originally was like if you ever wanted to borrow books and stuff while still working at your forge this would provide a way of absorbing the energy so it wouldn't risk burning your reading materials <laughs> that's adorable she's like uh, this yeah could, this, that this could be really nice cute. this could be nice oh also it has a very practical application or a dangerous scenario which we keep mm -hmm, finding ourselves mm -hmm. in more than I'd like. But that's yeah. cool, yeah. And I've definitely every time I've unleashed my like tum fire, it has always been like pretty wild and uncontrolled. So yeah. having it having it sounds cool. Yeah, it's basically uh, my role in the party w when it's not being forgotten for academics is I just make foci for everyone to channel what they do. <laughs> Which nice. is nice. This so, is my crafting channel. I'm glad that all of you could be here this stream. I make a new moon amulet for O. Uh, I make a new sword for Galley. That, that's it. So, um, while you like you let that like set and finish up, you get back to the studying and the prepping, and you're almost done. Uh, and you finish arranging all the notes that you acquired last time. The book from the workshop, and you start skimming it briefly. The audience doesn't see what you're seeing at this point. But I want our final shot to be on Yolanda's reaction as she reads, as she's skimming through this and reads the name Adonis. I think there is a very loud bird call that emanates out throughout all the halls. Instead of a, it, it yeah. and it started as a scream that be turned into a very loud bird call. Perfect. And under the bird call, I think there is a deep, dark chuckle. <laughs> and that's where we'll call our episode. Yay! <laughs> All Things right. couldn't stay nice forever. Heck. Gotta remind everyone that there is a plot happening. Machinations. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. say as if, you know, I have this all planned out like a spider's web. <laughs> you, you can say that as much as you want. I'm actually willing to believe you have like two things planned that will come about at some point. You just like save them in like a vault. Or pull I out at an opportunity. Right I don't. I have one thing maybe. Anyways, uh, Angela, it's actually not related to you. I have nothing planned with you yet. Or do I? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Hello, uh, let's, let's wrap up. Uh, let's keep our I'm, plugs quick and sweet. I'm Angela. I'm a freelance musician, uh, professional writer, and also have begun publishing playbooks for a kind of long-term project. As For whatever reason, I decided to convert all of the Final Fantasy XIV playable jobs into Slayer's playbooks, and I'm currently done through half of them, uh, which is in total eight books which are available at Voice of the Phoenix on my itch.io. So if you want to support me at Patreon for Philosophem, or if you want to see just more of my writings there, soon music, some creature designs that I do there as well. Uh, I am also going to be obviously here, but on Friends Who Roll Dice on occasion for the Monster Hearts and Solidus Institute game that's happening over there, and very soon going to be over on 
all nerds here for a few other things that will be happening and uh maybe some musical related things that will be popping up over there as well uh and my relationship podcast with my partner clearly yours where we just put out an episode of us going through bachelorette party questions which is a time <laughs> it's a time that's me perfect next up morgan uh hello uh morgan can find uh me on Twitter at magpie underscore mirror and the games that I write at nestedgames.h.io. Uh, I don't have anything uh, super concrete right now, um, but if you stare at the free project I have on itch, The Wraith, which is a Blades in the Dark playbook, I will soon-ish be working on updating that from an alpha into something approaching a more beta state, so stay tuned. Do Perfect. Alex? Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. You can find me on Twitter at a fractal dragon, and I design games at fractaldragon.itch.io, including Dragon Hearts, which is currently in the Summer Romance Bundle, where you can get a whole bunch of cool romance games for 20 bucks. Very cool. Uh, I also am on the game design podcast Unplaytested, uh, where we are going to put out some extremely wild stuff. Our next game is uh, Soul Crushers, the game of uh, existing in capitalism that's also infested with a bunch of weird gods and fantasy stuff uh, should be really fun next week. We're going to stream it. Well, that'll be two weeks ago when people right. listen to this. So yeah, It will have yeah. been streamed, and you can go check out the VOD in the episode. You can, exactly. Uh, and I'm also on Forever GM, uh, where we're actually going to be playing Dragon Hearts as well, so keep your eye on that podcast. Also, uh, for any pedants in the audience who had an issue with uh, Horticulture of Undersea Animals, that is a book that is about making gardens out of sea cucumbers and anemones and other plant-like undersea animals. As long as they don't steal any peanut butter, they're good. Uh, all right. B, take us away. Hello, hello. It is I, your busy non-binary B. You can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, a member of the Broadswords, a 5e d d actual play podcast. I host Anime Attaché, where I teach two newbies about anime. We're starting with season one of My Hero Academia. You can also find my stream of Power Play as a podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. As for streams, I have been heckin' busy lately. Um, most notably, I've been running Tabletop Otaku, where I get to talk about talk with game designers um, about their games and what kind of anime inspirations they've had for it. Beyond that, I'm going to be streaming on Go underscore JG on the 26th of this month. I don't know how that falls into the release of this, but it will be Thirsty Sword Lesbians. And if you cannot attend that one, I will also be running Thirsty Sword Lesbians again on the Sunday for Roll20 because it is Pride Month and I'm running all the gay games. And with that being said, if there's any content you want to consume that I've ever done, Earlier today, I had the pleasure of streaming on D&D Beyond with a handful of amazing casts as uh, D&D Beyond's first roundtable for Pride. Uh, it was an absolute delight. I got to speak with Anthony Rapp, who's in Star Trek Discovery, as one of the que queer characters. And, like, he was just such a peach. Um, that's an hour long, and that's available on D&D Beyond. Heck yeah. All right. And finally, that leaves me. Hello, hello, hello. I am Al Ramirez. I have been your host, game master, and game designer of this wonderful game called Chimera that you can find at play.chimera.games. By the time that this comes out, they uh, might not be on the itch yet, but we will have at least eight more playbooks for this game designed, if not 12. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, which will bring us close to having wrapped up all the core playbooks in initial design, if not uh, the redesigns. Uh, other than that, uh, because committing to things on recording is never a mistake, uh, I will have released not one, but two shonen systems in the two in the three weeks from when this is recorded and when, when it goes live. Um, right. So, you know, check those out on my itch. Otherwise, just find me on my Twitter at Emiraz, where you can find out if I have released those things and where to acquire them and what specific links are, because those links don't exist yet. Uh, but yeah, other than that, thank you all so so much for coming i want you to grab gently a coat of dust and reapply it to your sword and then grab just a bucket of paint 
and throw it onto your cook so that you can be prepared next time when you have to clean them once more. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to assume Burstam has given up on what splash. I'm saying at this point and like taken us on a raid already because no one should have to listen to this nonsense. But if you're still here, bye! <laughs>